Mommy Space, a place where you can remember who you are in the midst of it all. This podcast gives moms of all stages a voice to share their experiences and the truth that there is no right way to mom. Those eyes are getting older and and your beauty is growing wonderful. Welcome back. Happy Friday to you if you're listening once this releases. This is Bree, and I'm so excited that you decided to join us for episode three of season one. Today, you're going to hear from the Heiliger clan, the Heiliger Riddle clan, and um, some of their story, which is very exciting. They are family members of mine, so I'm a little bit biased, but I promise you, you will enjoy this episode. These women are incredible and have some amazing stories to share with you. So yeah, just get ready. I'm very excited. I even got to live with one of them for a time. You'll hear that in the episode. Anyways, before we dive in, I just wanted to share a review that one of you left um, and this person who called themselves a new friend, which is the cutest, said, I became a new mom last year and life has changed so much for me. Adjusting to it all had been a challenge and hearing others' stories is very therapeutic. Thanks for having these conversations and making it feel a little less lonely. Ah, that makes me so happy. You have no idea. I love hearing from you guys again. um, Please reach out to me. Share with me what you um, are wanting to hear more of or if you have something sweet to share like that. It really means so much to me. You have no idea. You can reach out to me on Instagram. I post every day. I have some fun stories typically every day or at least I try. Message me there. You can email me, whatever. I love making contacts and um, hanging out with you guys there. So anyways, without further ado, here is episode three. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, why don't you guys introduce yourselves really quick and then we'll kind of dive in with the stories. I'm Kathy Heiliger and I'm uh, 60, mm -mm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm 66 in January, this January. I am at this point in time, I believe, the matriarch Mm -hmm. of our family, and um, that is quite an honor. My name is Nicole Riddle, I'm 38, four girls, going back to school. (laughs) Awesome. I'm Stevie Heiliger, and I'm 35, and... I have three kids and work a lot all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Okay, so Nicole, you are Kathy's Kathy's daughter, daughter, Stevie, daughter-in-law, married to the son. Um, And we are all related, which I'm very (laughs) uh, much pride in. Um, You guys are my cousins through my dad. So, um, yeah, I was excited to have a conversation with you guys because um, I know some of your history and feel like you, well, from what I've seen, you guys have been really um, good at being open and like working through your stuff and like, and, and pressing into family. And the whole goal of this season is to talk about how we're shaped by the generations before us mm-hmm. and how we're continuing to pass on that legacy. So with that, I would love to hear um, a little bit about each of your motherhood journeys because, you know, it's called mommy space. But um, so, but first, let's start with you, um, Kathy, and uh, just share a little bit about maybe what that was like for you. I always say this, like I'll be like, what? So how did you how did you become a mom? And they're like, do you want the details? Like, <laughs> so I like try to be better about like what was your journey into motherhood? Like, way, way better. <laughs> it's actually really fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like were you were you trying to get pregnant like at the time? Just that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, please don't share this. Yeah. <laughs> That's for another episode. Every time, um, every time we talk about sexual things that kids just go oh my god <laughs> I hate that about parents anyway um, Bruce and I got married when we were both 21 wow. and we waited 7 years wow. to have Nicole so when she came along everybody thought it was kind of an immaculate conception again <laughs> 
Um, but we had to work out some stuff in our relationship. It was really hard for the first several years. And thank God we got through that and uh, kind of ironed out some wrinkles. So by the time I got pregnant with her, we were so ready. And I was convinced I was going to have a boy, just for some reason. So I had an emergency cesarean. And when I woke up, Bruce said to me, it's a girl. I went, what? (laughs) (laughs) And I did that three times before I even believed him. (laughs) Wow. So, um, but I have, I recall walking the hall with her when she's just Mm -hmm. months old, thinking I could never love another Mm -hmm. human being more in my entire life. Mm -hmm. I completely fell in love with her. And uh, just the, 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 the capacity to love an, in another way mm-hmm. other than romantic mm-hmm. love or you know spousal love or parental it's a it's a mystery it was such a mystery and I found myself just in a tumbling mm-hmm. fall down joyful abandonment to loving her and then of course Eric two and a half years later so um, it was wondrous to me, mm-hmm. and and it still is really. Even though the dynamics change, and you know, I'll fast forward when you go to, when you have grandkids and the same. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll talk about that yeah, a yeah, bit yeah. later. But I I still am amazed amazed at the grace and the capacity to bond mm-hmm. with an with a human being that's a fraction of your size yeah. and be willing to lay your life down for them. Yeah. So true. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. And there she is. <laughs> <laughs> and it continues. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Well, do you want to go? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, we have those our four girlies. Um Gracie is 17. Ava's almost 14, Shalem's 11, and then we decided after <laughs> some encounters with the Lord to have Cora, and she's two. And um, Gracie was a surprise. We were not married, and we quickly got married after that. Had a very, did not work out all our kinks. <laughs> <laughs> Had to work out all of those things with Gracie here. But that also was, um, she's grace for a reason. Mm. There was a lot of grace covering that season. Mm. Uh, It was really special, really hard, and really beautiful. Um, So we have had an ongoing process of working through those things, but her coming and her temperament when she came was exactly what we needed. Mm. And then all the way on through, right? Not more than we could handle with him. So... um, yeah, they've been a joy. <clears throat> they've been a joy and treasures, and uh, we've all learned together a little bit. So I was um, 20 when I got pregnant, 20 when I got married, and 20 when she was born. Wow. She turned. Um, she was born, and I turned 21 a month later. So she was 26, and wow. um, and so we've done a little bit of growing up together. But there's a special bond there with that. Mm. I know Stevie knows about that. And um, and so then as the other girls have come and been part of the family, it's been a really special, unique way that the Lord set up everybody's timing. Um, took us like nine months to get pregnant with Ava, so they're three years and four months apart. Mm. Shailen and her, two years and four months apart. And then obviously the baby. <laughs> so Gracie and the baby are 15 years apart. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, but it's my favorite thing in the whole world. Mm. That's what I was made for, first and foremost, mm. it feels like, right? Loving Jesus, having babies, mm. loving my husband, and all the other things after that. That's awesome. So, huh? My turn. <laughs> uh, so Eric and I have been together since we were 18. We got married at 23 and got surprised by our Austin <laughs> uh, 10 months after we got married. Um, like, big surprise. My journey into motherhood was not graceful. 
<laughs> I, uh, I was planning to go back to law school and found out right after, a week after I got accepted into the new school I wanted to transfer to that I was mm-hmm. pregnant and due in the fall. Wow. And it was a big shock. Like, we were actually avoiding it. And yeah, 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 yeah. So I actually threw a fit mm-hmm. on the floor. Like, sat on the floor and cried. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, for real. Full on temper tantrum <laughs> about it. Um, and it's funny because we've told my oldest son, Austin, that story, and he thinks it's hysterical. No he way. Thinks oh, it's, yeah. oh, oh, he my thinks gosh. it's. You know, he asked, like, Mom, why? You know, and I said, because being, being someone's mama is a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's scary. And, of course, I love you, but I wasn't done being selfish yet. Yeah. I had to work yeah. through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew what that meant. All my friends were having babies. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so that was our first was, was a difficult journey into that for me. I, I had a good, my first trimester was probably, I'd say, it was I was depressed. Oh, wow. And not at the baby, just the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, what were you thinking? I'm not ready for this. I can't yeah. handle this. We're, you know. So, but Eric was super stoked from the get-go. Wow. It's because he didn't know it was coming yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then with Blakey, he was planned. And we have been very fortunate that it's not, it has not been a difficult road for us in, mm. in getting pregnant. So, Blakey took us like two months. And, wow. And then the taste story is a pretty, pretty epic one. But she, uh. She's our little love, and she's the best time I've ever been right. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, it's good. I've always been a full time working and full time, mm-hmm. you know, I've worked it that way with my kids mm-hmm. where I've done both sides. So mm. I'm tired a lot, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's what I wanted. I was raised by a working mom, mm-hmm. and so I always knew that would be yeah part of who I was sure that would be both sides and it's hard sometimes but I feel like my quality of motherhood is better because I am able Mm -hmm. to release that energy that way yeah yeah so yeah that's great it's so interesting like um hearing all the different stories I didn't obviously know as much about yours but the diversity even in your stories is so like refreshing like it just is a testament to how motherhood is like it's so different for everybody um but you touched on something i would love to hear a little bit um just the differences in how you guys were raised even some of the things you mentioned like your mom worked um and the differences it was for you guys and how that's played out into your lives now um so yeah i don't know how who wants to go first there or if you wanted to share maybe like some of the things that you were really important to you in raising your kids and how you tended to yourself um that's like been a really important thing for me to like hear from other moms is like okay but how did you know like what was important to you and how did you tend to that and make sure you were still you know protecting your heart and like doing what made you come alive in the midst of like raising this amazing human you know Mm -hmm. so yeah why don't would you mind starting with that well, can I just tag yeah. off something Stevie said? Yeah, go for it. I forgot that I went through some kind of mini grief when mm. I found out I was pregnant because mm. dying, of course, to have a child. But on the other hand, I realized ah, my life, my own You're life, dying my to freedom. Is, yes. Yeah, going to LA, going to move. Yeah, stuff. wow. You know, I, I, it's like a, it's on mm. the way out, and I didn't. I had no permission from somebody to say. Yeah, it's okay to grieve that part yeah, of your life. Yeah, yeah. And I know a lot of women who are in that role, but they this is never talked about. Yeah. So they just they feel horrible. Totally. And, and they feel guilty that they're sad over their right. old life. And anyway, it's to me it was surprising. So I'm really glad you brought mm. that up because I had to, I had the same thing, and I felt shamed mm. that of course I'm happy about this, but. Mm. Yeah, so that's really good. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna I say, did you? Yeah, what was it like? Because for you? all I wanted to do was be a wife and a mom. Even uh, though I was working hard through high school, I wanted to get into my college because I I wanted to be prestigious in my in my education. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know what, anything that I wanted to do. Yeah. Besides be a wife and a mom, so my shame came just from having you know having sex before I was married. That was my shame. But the mm. baby or being a mom. I was like, boo! That's <laughs> so not great. immediately, right? Yeah, Sad yeah. because of circumstances, yeah, yeah, yeah. but 
Wow. As far as being a mom, I was like, dude, this is my wheelhouse. Wow. This is what I do. So um, I love that contrast. Then that's yeah. like yeah. so cool. That's great. Well, I I always wanted to be a writer, mm-hmm. and so uh, but I wanted children. So I mm-hmm. Bruce and I opted to, for me not to work. So I stayed home with them for till they were out of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was always this creative edge to me because w- before I got pregnant with them, I was taking screenwriting courses and producing courses. Wow. So I wanted to go into film uh-huh. or some kind of media stuff. Yeah. But that came to an abrupt halt. Sure. The Lord just said, mm, on hold. And so, but I, I had these undercurrents of needing to work, needing to creatively express. Yeah. But there was no time. So there was a lot of frustration. In how do I satisfy my need for art, yeah. and then manage laundry and <laughs> yeah. meals and you know sicknesses with snotty nose kids six times a day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's a tedious thing. And then when you don't have a lot of money, we I could vacuum our whole house from one plug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's kind of the best in a lot of ways. <laughs> But it was it was hard because my values were them. My mm-hmm. values were mothering them. But I had this longing to write scripts mm-hmm. and fulfill what I might kind of my destiny is. Mm-hmm. So when I realized that that whole Proverbs thirty one thing. Mm. <laughs> I read it and get depressed. I do too. I thought, oh, who does? Who can be that? Mm-hmm. But it's really seasonal. Mm-hmm. So I sell purple now in my 60s. So I'm, as you know, we're going on tour to speak, mm-hmm. um, the royalty tour. And then I, I finished my second book. So it's just a seasonal thing. Yeah. But I didn't realize that. Nobody explained that to me when mm-hmm. I was early, you know, younger. And I just thought, oh, all my dreams have to die. Yeah. yeah. And that was even more depressing because mm. I thought, I'm sacrificing my entire life for these people. Mm. Love, I love. Who I love dearly. These little beings. <laughs> these little beings. <laughs> who break their arms and, yeah. you know. But I had to trust that God had a timing factor. Yeah. That's and really um, so it's been fun for me to watch Stevie be able to manage. Hmm. What she does, she's remarkable. She's phenomenal. <laughs> to be able to do what she does, she yeah. runs it so beautifully. Be maternal, but I, I didn't have that modeling. My mom yeah. stayed home yeah. with us. So, but Stevie's mom worked, and so she understood sort of the dynamics of how do you balance both. Right, right. I didn't. I never had that. So, uh, and all that to say, my, I, I think we landed okay. But uh, <laughs> I just for me, it's my creative business part of me is way later in life and uh, and actually it's okay with me now I think that's amazing and I even I've heard some of that even from my own grandma um because she had I think a similar Mm -hmm. kind of pull um but it gives me a lot of hope too you know like in the midst of it all so that's really amazing yeah just got to interject. If you yep. saw my house right now, you would not think oh. that was like, <laughs> it was pretty bad. Why don't you share then, Stevie, like what that was like for you growing up um, in that way? So my my growing up in childhood, my story has lots of twists yeah, and turns yeah. with family. Um, my bio parents divorced when I was three, and um, my mom remarried when I was six, I believe. And he passed away when I was eight. Um, and then she remarried my current dad, stepdad, uh, when I was 10. So my mom and I, our relationship was very much more of a friendship a lot earlier mm. than usual. Um, kind of survival mode, a mm-hmm. lot of that. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of was what it was. So um, I think, so she was a single working mom. Mm. Um Ran, ran a couple businesses, you know, she's just, she's that personality. But I come from all of the women in my family. My grandmother, all of them worked. Wow. Book, bookkeepers, like, four no generations way. back yeah. at least. Oh, my yeah. gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> so that's, that, that's just our family line. Yeah. They all were working. They wanted to, not necessarily because they had to. They just enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, 
So that, in some ways, wasn't... That's probably why it wasn't a question. Sure, sure. Um, but my mom started training me in it when I was, like, 16. Wow. So I was doing... You know, so we just did that. But, um, yeah, so I started... Like, when I was a kid, I'd have, like, a little Miss Junior executive kit. That was the best. That's really agree. Okay, so my cell phone. Oh. <laughs> um, I love it. You so, need a pager? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, was, it was the cell phone. Like, it was oh, more oh. phone. You know, um, so, yeah. So, that was, it was just the way, that's what family looked like, or what mm-hmm. motherhood looked like um, to me. So, it was just, yeah, it was kind of what it wanted to be and I would have people along the way say oh you can't have it all like Mm -hmm. you can't have a career and motherhood and Mm -hmm. because I did I wanted to be with my kids be on the field trips but still work and do all that and God has been very gracious to Mm -hmm. us that you know my husband has been in a job that I could build my business through so yeah so it's been it's been interesting and my mom she's a strong woman strongest woman I know yeah. mm-hmm. so she's, she's taught me mm-hmm. how to do mm-hmm. you know and that's that's when I come alive is when I'm mm-hmm. doing and yeah. helping and seeing even small effects on yeah. other mm-hmm. on other things so did that answer the that's question? great yeah that was okay. perfect <laughs> and remind me tell me if I'm wrong you were you like when you had applied to school before you found out you were pregnant. You were going into law, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had already done a, one year. And okay. I was going to okay. transfer and start my second year. Yeah. Yeah, that's just amazing to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like right, a so. mind for law. Like mm-hmm. wow. It, that's it makes just... my eyes cross. <laughs> <laughs> like what's that word mean? Yeah. yeah. I love it. That's love amazing. It. That's yeah. So cool. You have actually been really. This is totally side note, but helpful in. Election when election time oh, comes, right? like, call <laughs> Stevie. She knows. She'll tell you yeah, all she'll the translate. things. I actually exactly. had like exactly. the, on like on my clipboard on my phone this year because I had people texting me, so I would just That's paste. So smart. Say, yeah. <laughs> so smart. I love it. That's good. Cool. So you kind of shared a little bit, but I yeah tell tell that part for you, um, and then I would love for you even to share like kind of where you're at now. Um, cause you mentioned going back to school. Uh-huh. So maybe even like sharing what that transition of life, cause you're still in, in a baby stage too, in a lot of ways, but like, yeah. Just... It is a kind of a, a different yeah. thing. Um, so I did grow up, even though mom didn't work outside the home, I knew that mom had that passion for writing mm-hmm. and I knew that she, um, made time for those things, like so time cool. for the Lord and time for some of those things. That I didn't ever feel like, oh, mom's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember having that sense, but I did know that there was some element of outlet for her or self care, so if you want. I yeah, don't know yeah. how to call it that, but. Well, interest. is that what it felt like to you, self care, to like pour into those things? You don't remember doing it much? Well, I didn't have time to do it very much, so I felt more frustration than self care. Mm-hmm. So I went to Jazzercise, which was so yeah. cute. Right. Yes. yes. I love Jazzercise. Yeah. <laughs> but um, writing didn't come up consistently un- until they were out mm. of high Isn't school. Isn't that funny? We were just talking about that. How you can like do one thing one time and your kid's like, my parents always yep. did this yep. thing. Yeah. Like, thank you. Yeah, mom. yeah. <laughs> or totally. you did something wrong. And oh, yeah. Like, it goes both. never. <laughs> Anyway, so I rem- cool. well, whatever it was, yeah, yeah. I remember it being important to you. Yeah, and I think I would journal. That's probably maybe what journaling. Yeah, mind. maybe just taking some time yeah. for you that was important. But yeah. again, it didn't feel like it cost me terribly. I just remember it being a value. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just did not have other aspirations to the point where I was like, "Is something wrong with me that I don't mm. want to be a lawyer? That I don't mm. like have other things that I, I." I don't like just mom. I don't like people saying just stay at home mom. Yeah, no, On yeah. the other hand, I know that we're created for other yeah. things besides just mothering, even if that's what the season looks like. Mm-hmm. So um, I kind of had to get past that and just embrace where I was and and just enjoy it, and which I did and have. And, um, and then the girls started getting older. My older three started getting older, and I 
all of them were in school, and I was kind of sitting <laughs> home, and I, and I dropped out of college when I when we came. So, um, <clears throat> and I was wasting everybody's money that had helped pay for my schooling because <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was just going kind of screwing around with my classes. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So, so um, when the girls all went to school age, and I was like six hours a day, five days a week, I am. Fancy free. What yeah. what do people do when you yeah. still need to be available? Because yeah. okay, so when my girls were in school age, we had left Southern California. We moved away to Reading, which was really rude. It was really <laughs> rude. The family was totally supportive. <laughs> <laughs> we um, left when my youngest was four. So the Lord was wow. and Josh never. We never. <clears throat> the That's plan so was not crazy. Ever, it's been that long. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is kind of crazy, huh? It's yeah. So we knew that we would leave eventually because slower, we were looking for a slower-paced lifestyle, even though we so highly valued things here, my husband's yeah. cowboy land, these kinds of things. So the Lord was super gracious to let me have all my babies here mm. with my mama, mm. with my parents, with my family, with our church friends support mm. system that was 17-year community that we yeah. were part of. Very, very gracious. And then I got to the point where I was like, all right, I feel like I'm ready to be uncomfortable. Mm. Which was so sweet wow. of the Lord to let me get there instead of be like, oh, you're done. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's so Which true. he has to do with us sometimes. Yeah. But for me, I got, he let me get to wow. a place where I was like, babe, I feel like, all right, it's time to be. So then we moved to Reading. We didn't have a job. We lived in a trailer for nine months on our in-laws property, my sister and brother-in-law. Tell them and about the puppies. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. We lived in this fifth wheel that was supposed to be like, ooh, hey, ooh. we'll stay on the property, the cousins will play, it'll be two months, and then we'll be on our feet, it'll be great. <laughs> and it was nine <laughs> months, our dog got pregnant, and, we, and so we had the dog in the trailer with six puppies, and we had to have the temperature up to 80 degrees, because oh. it was January, and they would have frozen in the barn, they would have died. So they had to be in the trailer with us and the temperature up to 80 oh. degrees the whole time for them to survive. Oh, my God. So it was like <laughs> oh my God. smelly. Six Labradors. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're not small, you know, chihuahuas. <laughs> like. Funny, at that point, the grace lifted. We were like, yeah. oh, okay, it's <laughs> moved out. Funny how that works. I know, <laughs> yeah. And, um, we actually questions. stepped down in faith. The Lord provided. We were able to get a house. Wow. It, were, it has been built upon. He's been building his construction company since then. But... Um, But so we were there, and I didn't have the community that we had here or some of the resources that we had here, and the kids were all in school, and I was like, what What do you do when you, since you don't have the community, Mm -hmm. I can't be like, go to a full-time job, or even really a part-time job, um, and be like, mom, oh my gosh, Shaylin's sick at school, could you go pick her up, I'll be off at five, or whatever, I I couldn't do that, and we've had some friends, but if your kid's puking... Like, yeah, you yeah. got your mama pretty much, and that's it. So, that's so, um, true. so I was like, what do you do? What do you do when you have all this time? But not really, because spring break, summer break, you, yeah. you kind of still have to be available. So I found a job, actually, that was just um, a godsend. Mm-hmm. It just allowed me flexibility to be in the office or be at home. Yeah. Or I could leave if the kids were sick. And um, so I took it home during the summers, spent a little time doing it from home. Just worked out, right? The yeah. Lord just brought me what I needed. And that was great for a season. Then we decided to have Cora. Life completely stopped. <laughs> we kind of isolated. We kind of... Because then we went from three to four, which was a big jump. Wow. Even though the girls were older and very self-sufficient. Yeah. Three to four was a was a big difference, yeah. right? And um, so that was a little bit... Um, it was just been a hard season um, and a little bit isolating season. But through it... I then decided, and through some beautiful therapy, (laughs) I decided to um, go back to school. Mm. And um, actually, we were in therapy because it was, and with our counselor friend, um, I said, oh my word, Lord, if Marianne answers the phone right now, I swear to goodness, I'll go back to school and become a marriage and family therapist. Because I was just needing her yeah. at the moment. I was like, uh, she totally answers the phone. I'm like, it's a sign. <laughs> and I made the mistake of telling her. Oh. And she was like, oh, you think that came out of nowhere? Or do you think that maybe the Lord put something in your heart that just came out when you said that? And I was like, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, 
needless to say, I'm back in school. It's been super stimulating, super fun. The kids are proud of me. Mm. They they do a great job taking care of their sister if I need them to. Um, I'm thriving. It's nice to be like, I literally was like, am I going to still be smart? <laughs> like, right after 18 yeah, totally. years, I haven't worked my academic wow, brain in yeah. so long. And raising my babies I've loved and obviously have a lot of that to do still and I'm excited for that. But the Lord told me when I had the encounter about having another baby that it, she, this baby would dovetail with my destiny mm. so that there would be, it wouldn't be like <laughs> you're laying your shows. life That's down so all over again, sacrificing for it. It would be like, yep, we'll be able to move forward together with yeah. more things that you're created for and Cora wow. together with obviously my older babies. So. Wow. So yeah, that's where we're at right now in that process and really enjoying it and looking forward to whatever the Lord turns it into. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So just as a tag to, to Nikki, I, I, in screenwriting, there are certain plot points mm. to a film to build the storyline, build the character, the character arcs change. But What's cool about film is that you don't know what twists are going to happen in this. She just said mm. one of them. Cora was a twist. Cora was a plot point in mm. them. But she didn't know that the, the, the master author of her life had a child, hmm. you know, who now enters the picture and has, and has turned her life in a totally different yeah. direction. But her destiny is going to flow with that, right, so it's right. just fascinating to me. It's not the script any of us would have written. Yeah, who'd have known? I mean, well, and it getting seems, pregnant right yeah. after year year one with law or me yeah, to, you know, it's all, it's just fascinating to me. Well, it's interesting too, as you know, as you're sharing that, like, who knows what Cora's destiny is, mm-hmm. and if there's something in there, she needs a she mom needs who's in that. that yeah, you know, Super. um. Yeah, that's just like so fascinating yeah, to me. That. You're right. Yeah, that plot, and I think uh, at least, at least for me, like from what I grew up with or what I saw when I approached motherhood, because I had to grieve a lot too with like my freedom, my dreams. Like I'm not gonna be able to do anything, you know. Um, and that is so counter culture, believing that a child could be a part of your destiny moving forward and being able to do both like it's just so powerful so powerful mm-hmm. so i love that i'm proud of you by the way oh yeah, thank, thank you thank you thank you're you. an amazing yeah. artist but you're an amazing mom yeah you are mm-hmm. i love oh, the blend. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> glad we have a tissue for her. thank you, you are. thank you well I would love to, let me just pull up my questions here. Let's see. We got that. Um, Yeah, I think I'd love to talk about legacy and some of the things that, like, you may have or may have not been aware of that you were, like, pressing into and pouring into your kids as far as legacy goes. Things that you wanted to be left behind. Um, You wanted them to have instilled in them once you were gone. Um, And how that kind of shaped your motherhood or your mothering, um, and then maybe some of the things that you guys think about. Obviously, a lot of that's already kind of touched on as far as like working or not working, like pursuing the things that you're made for or whatever. But were there were there and are there specific things that come to mind when you hear legacy? Um. Well, just to maybe as a little subtext to what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. On Christmas Eve, a couple nights ago. We had a time where we talked about God's faithfulness to us in the generations. Mm. So we shared stories of, like, I, I remember my parents, my dad was a doctor. I'll, I'll just quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He please. was a doctor. He bought a house that we, uh, that he couldn't afford, really. The Lord told him to do it. He was in surgery, and the doctor standing opposite him said, Hey, Bob, looks like you bit off a good chunk. And he goes, Yes, I did. And he goes, Well... If you need some help, let me know financially. And it was at noon that day that he needed ten thousand dollars. Wow. And the doctor gave him that ten thousand dollars for that noon down payment. And that's where we all grew up. Wow. So God, I remember that story and it gave me faith that when we bought houses, mm. God was gonna come through. So we kind of shared wow. the the sequence of, Oh my gosh, if he did it for them mm. and he did it for us, then he'll do it for you guys and 
there, it's just a, it's fascinating. So legacy on that context that's huge, yeah, is a big deal. And uh, so we have a we have a dual heritage on both of our my husband and my side of generational believers. There's a phenomenal impartation mm-hmm. that comes in strength and cur- probably courage and uh, tenacity, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but in terms of legacy, mm-hmm. for I think my mom, um, my mom left a legacy of choosing to always grow. Mm-hmm. She was. She came from ten different foster homes. Her parents wow. divorced when she was five, so she she married my father, who was in med school at the time. She had five kids in six years. Wow! And good. I know. Oh I just, my like, gosh! <laughs> um, but she didn't have the fundamental basics to, you know, think. Okay, I'm going to have a prosperous life. Right. But at age fifteen, she came to know the Lord from a, a Sunday school teacher, and it revolutionized her life. Wow. She got brought into a big family from Texas who just threw her arms, their arms around wow. her and nurtured her, called her up to life with love, and she became an amazing mom. Wow. So choosing to always grow was one of her key, her key things. And then I think hospitality mm-hmm. was a huge gift in her. So we all learned mm-hmm. to be hospitable with entertaining and, you know, mm-hmm. That kind of thing. So I think there's a legacy in that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You guys, Stevie and Eric, in fact, <laughs> last uh, to, at Christmas, I bought them stuff for their house because I knew they were moving into this big entertaining phase. Aww. The Lord just said, okay, it's time. I don't know why, but I just That's felt so like cool. <laughs> they needed the equipping of, the, mm-hmm. of things to use. So all that to say. Yeah. Those are two pieces that I think legacy came from my mom, mm-hmm. but I hope is is going out for you guys. That's really cool. So, well, I have to say the financial side for sure is a legacy that you've put in both of your kids. I tease Eric all the time. I'm like, do you have a money tree in the backyard that you know about? Because the faith of <laughs> it'll just work out, or it'll be what we need all the way through our relationship mm-hmm. and our marriage is like never a doubt in his mind, never a stress. When well, you're a bookkeeper too, God. so <laughs> I'm looking at the numbers going. Yeah, yeah. But he always has, always, always has. But it cracked me up because both Nicole and mm-hmm. Eric have that where it's just okay. Yep, it's oh, gonna happen. It'll be okay. Yeah. We were taught you tithe this much, you save this much, and you live on the rest. Mm-hmm. You just trust the Lord; it'll it'll work out. And we were like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that doesn't have challenges, right. but overall, yeah. there's a piece there. Yeah. No, but um, it's there. It's definitely a legacy because. Both of you guys are that way, and I, I'm a natural warrior <laughs> as it is. But I just affirm that for sure. Mm, that's that's neat. Neat. That's really cool. Well, thank you yeah. for that. Yeah. Who wants to go next? Um, do you want to talk more about what you got from your mama? Or? Oh, um, goodness. Yeah, legacy from my mom. Um, a fighting spirit, mm-hmm. I think, um, but also just everything, watching her go everything, through everything that she has and knowing the details of that journey, um, just loving and gratefulness. That was my grandma mm-hmm. used to say, count your blessings one by one. You know, mm-hmm. like when you'd be going through a hard time, that's the way to stop mm-hmm. it in so that good. instant. Yep. Just do that. And that's been my mom's, that's what I've gotten from her is she's she cannot be depressed for more than five minutes. Mm-hmm. Like she is a joyful person mm-hmm. and she will find gratefulness in an instant. Mm-hmm. So Literally. Good. It's I, I see her face in my mind and she'll be upset for she can't handle it. Even when there was an argument, she had to okay, but we still love each other. You know, try yeah. to yeah. um so definitely um that and tr- me trying I try to do that. Mm-hmm. Um my personality is a little bit different than that, but um, our middle names are, are are the legacy. My mom is Marla Joy. I'm Stevie Joy and mm-hmm. Taylor Joy. Oh, so we've kept wow. that going through. Oh, and Taylor like bubbling. She over is a now. bubbling little joy. She mm-hmm. is a joy. Um, that's so cool. So I would say that's definitely what my mom has. And then <clears throat> for me, 
what came to mind when you asked it the first time with it's it's my daughter especially but all my kids but um letting them know how delighted mm-hmm. we are like mm-hmm. how how delightful they are that she's delighted in um she's been healing for me because mm-hmm. I didn't have that until I was about 10 and my my dad had to he says love the snot out of me because I was such a hard shell by the time he got me um, so watching my daughter have no doubt in her mind especially how much her daddy delights in her wow. life has been that's that's what I want my kids to know though that they so are good. they can do anything and we're here mm-hmm. to back them and challenge them but to, mm-hmm. yeah so that would be that's what came to mind when that's you asked amazing. the question for me. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. Um, I think definitely we've caught on with continuing to press in, continuing to grow. I was actually sharing that with mm-hmm. some other family last night. My parents have continued to press in. They've continued mm-hmm. to grow in their lives. They've been so faithful. Like we've watched them at every stage with mm-hmm. the different things that have come at them. Be like, oh, okay, Lord. <laughs> okay, Lord. Back yeah. to the Lord. Back to the Lord. Back to the Lord. Not that they would stray away, but, <clears throat> but that they wouldn't be distracted yeah. by those things. It was still, mm-hmm. here's what we're choosing to focus on. Here's what we're choosing to believe. Here's what we're choosing to press into um, as, thing, as different things come in different stages of life yeah. and, um, and continue to grow. I was like, Mom, I can't even be upset with you. <laughs> I remember something from my childhood that was rough because you haven't done that in 20 years yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. right? Like, there's no, I don't know. I really genuinely don't look back and say, mm-hmm. wow, you, for all my life, you've done this to me. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they are just faithful to press mm-hmm. in. And so that has been a real huge example for us. And I feel like I've caught to try to just keep, keep on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that is important to me and important to me to hand down to the girls. Um, I, the Lord gave me a prayer. I don't know how many girls I had yet when I, maybe just Gracie, but, but I, I was like, Lord, what do I, what's the, what's the important thing to pray for them? And he gave me these words and he said, um, for their confidence to be in him, their security to be in him, their identity to be in him and their hope. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. I don't think I had. I think I must have had the first three and not Cora yet. And I was like four. Okay, whatever. So, oh. <laughs> and then I had. And I. But hope came later. He gave wow. me these first three, mm-hmm. and then I was like, one day I was like, I feel like you can have those three things, and if you don't have your hope in Jesus, yeah. it doesn't. You can you can have your identity, your confidence, and your security, but if you don't have hope, mm-hmm. anyway. So he gave me those. So I try to that as far as legacy is concerned right try to make sure that those things are happening and their sisterhood is a really big deal to me like I pray Lord I want them to be each other's best friends I want them to be the ones that if they start to stray off the path yeah. they're able to pull each other back together so when I'm gone right they yeah. are there um, I just have my little brother and we weren't super close growing up but we, like he's very 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 special to me now yeah. and his wife and his family and so I know that that's just super good and important um that's so good so pressing into the lord those four things and then their their relationship with each mm. other are the things that come to my mind when i think about what i want to make sure that's so is good. going on when i'm not home when i'm not here yeah yeah <clears throat> when you're at home i love that that's so beautiful Anything else to add to that stuff? Well, you're a cousin, so you see. Mm. What do you see? I would be interested to know. That's really good. Well, I had the great pleasure of getting to live (laughs) with Nicole and her husband and her girls. This is before Cora was around in Reading. And, um, you know, I think I have probably more insight into that into your lives because I haven't spent as much time with you guys. I have more, I think, too, with you. But I think one of the things that I've, that was really inspiring to me when living with you guys was um, Josh, your husband, was there. Like, mm-hmm. he was there in the home. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, he was working, but 
his presence there mm-hmm. was really significant for mm-hmm. me um, because my dad traveled a lot when I was younger mm-hmm. and he still does and he was an amazing father sure. and you know so supportive always always there like you'd always pick up his phone but it's different sure. right so that was really healing for me actually oh, yeah. being able to be there and like even though it wasn't that long mm-hmm. just like living in home with a dad present and and there mm-hmm. um getting to do high low at the dinner table with you guys you know <laughs> high low high we changed high low high right right that's right um so i think that was really impacting for me yeah. um and then even just growing up around you guys getting to visit like your your ability i think it is a lot of the hospitality thing too just mm-hmm. your ability to bring family together and like i always felt really important whenever and i still do whenever i'm around your family um, and that I can always come to you. I can always like in, in any situation, like you've offered so many times, like come and stay, like mm-hmm. you need a break <laughs> from the kit, you know, from Bobby. Bring your mom and dad. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that hospitality, yeah, for sure oh, is a huge geez. thing. Feeling important and, and valued and treasured. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, that's been really powerful. So that's great. <laughs> that's a huge nurturing gift, mom. Oh yeah, huge. yeah, huge for sure. And a massive blessing. Yeah, <laughs> we could <have> paint. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think so? Thank you. No, oh. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I think my mom, my mom nurtured by doing like acts, Martha mm-hmm. acts of service. Yeah. It was acts of service. So, but my my love language was touch. So mm-hmm. so nurture to me feels like touch. Yeah. But for her, it's acts of service. So. So it's interesting how we nurture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We give away what we most need, probably. Uh, on the other hand, we learn to appreciate these other love languages. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. That's it's really good. Mm-hmm. Another really fond memory I always have is um, caramel corn. Yeah. Thank you, caramel corn. <laughs> Before you leave today, we'll... <laughs> oh, oh yeah. man. So delicious. I can still remember the smell and then walking in this room seeing these chairs. Like... <laughs> All the memories. It's so special. <laughs> oh, guys, this is so lovely. Thank you so much for digging in and taking the time to share oh, yeah. these places in your hearts. It's, fun. it's very That's special. An Isn't it fun to see uh, the, the familial bleed out into the next, the positives bleed out into the next generations? Mm-hmm. And the next generation seemed to get better and better and better and mm-hmm. less of the of the sad or the hard and yeah. more of the better and the good. At least that's how I see it. So mm-hmm. like Nick and Josh, mm-hmm. are, I, I kind of feel like they're the best parts of me. Eric and mm-hmm. C are kind of the best parts of that's me. That's so cool. And that's like shocking to me. I, I thought they were going to get, oh, they're going to inherit. Oh, when yeah, was totally. Born, she had three rolls on her thighs. I thought, oh, no, she's inherited my thighs. <laughs> But look at her. She's like, ah, she has great legs. So anyway. <laughs> oh, There's man. your legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The legs. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> she legacy. has dad's legs. <laughs> I love that, though. Mm-hmm. The seeing the best parts of you in that. Because mm-hmm. I totally freak out about, like, the, you know, the little things I'm doing, sure. you know. Are gonna affect. Oh, our children you know, are mirrors to be yeah, that, right? Yeah. Those are always fun. That's more perspective because we're still in the like, yeah, worrying. We're seeing all the things yeah. in them that we're not parenting mm-hmm. well enough or right enough. But it does help. With Gracie and Ava, they're older now, and you're starting to be like, oh, okay, we're trying to. All right, yeah, we're yeah, good. <laughs> we're good girls. We're making good mm-hmm. decisions, and even if we don't make good decisions. We understand how to kind of work through that. So. That's so good. I mean, even just looking at you right now with I'm and of course your parents yeah. are uh, close to us so mm. but seeing them in you mm. and you like they do there's yeah. I, the yeah. ex, even your expressions but also <laughs> your but also your wisdom mm. and your um your your capacity to articulate your kindness mm. you know your heart mm. comes out mm. so i just see that flow chart and it's fascinating to me so so I love that I love the experience of that thank you 
Even Sorry. though you didn't name your kid after me, I'm still sorry. I mean, she's still your name, so. I know. <laughs> she's a blonde, too. Oh, she is. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. I That's forgive awesome. you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I receive it. <laughs> awesome. Hey guys, it's me. I just wanted to add one quick thing. One of the things that I learned from Stevie was journaling and this was a huge deal. I just, I'm just popping in at the end here to share because I felt like it was really significant. It totally popped into my head after we had this conversation and as, as far as Kathy asking me what, what I see in them. Stevie was a huge um, advocate for journaling and that has totally changed my life. So shout out Stevie. Just wanted to give you a little plug before I end here. So awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. Please share this with a friend if it impacted you in any way and leave a review on iTunes so other mamas can hear the truth that they are enough and they are doing their very best. Be sure to catch up on what's happening in the Mommy Space community every day on Instagram at Mommy Space and you can email me at mommyspace at gmail.com for questions or interview recommendations. All my love to you, mama. You're amazing. See you next week. Just to say that I'm the one you love It's so like you to do the best for one The best for love It's so like you to do the best for one